wonderful Savior. And he really wants to save you. Wonderful Savior. Turn to him now as your Savior and your Lord. For he came to earth to die on your record. And have a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Hello, and welcome to a series that we're going to call Gospel Gems. We're going to go through some stories in the Bible beginning with different letters. And today we're going to start right at the beginning with the letter A. But before we do anything else, we're going to read a little bit from the Bible, just one verse. It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy is down there underneath that arrow and when we come to chapter 3 and verse 16 it says this all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's found in 2nd Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 all scripture every part of the Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22 it's all given by inspiration of God in other words God told men what to write, and they wrote only what God told them to write. So we know that the Bible is absolutely, totally, and completely God's Word. Well, A, it's for all. We've already found that, but we've got a text that we're going to learn that starts with the word all as well. And then we're going to find that the letter A... Well, it takes us to a lovely lady called Anna. And we're going to find that the letter A, it speaks to us of a man called Andrew, who was one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus. So A, it's for all, and it's for Anna, and it's for Andrew. Anna, what a lovely lady she was. We find her story right at the beginning of the Gospels, of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was born just after. After he'd been born Mary and Joseph brought him into a thing called the temple. Now this was a bit like a very uh, posh church shall we say and uh, uh, they brought uh, the baby the Lord Jesus into this temple really to thank God for him and there was a man there he was called Simeon. I've always thought that Simeon was an old man but I've been thinking about it recently, and maybe he wasn't. The Bible doesn't say. I think I thought he was an old man simply because of what he said when he saw the Lord Jesus. He said, Let us now thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And Simeon just said, I've seen God's salvation. I'm happy to die and go to heaven. That's why I thought he was an old man, but maybe he wasn't. But Anna... She certainly was an older lady. She really was. We don't really know how old Anna was. I think myself that she could well have been over a hundred years old. She was certainly over 80 years old anyway, but I think possibly over a hundred. And she came in when the Lord Jesus was there and she gave thanks unto the Lord. She thanked God for sending his son into the world. Now that's a wonderful thing. We can thank God for so many things. I hope you're thankful to God. Sometimes when we pray, we can have a great big sort of shopping list of all our wants. Oh Lord, I want this. And oh Lord, I need that. And oh Lord, please give me this. We're all very similar. But Anna, she thanked God for sending his son. Now I wonder if you've ever thanked God for sending the Lord Jesus into the world. The Bible says why he came. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's you and me. Well Anna thanked 
God for his son. But not only did she thank God for his son, but she also did something else. Anna spoke about the Lord Jesus to everybody that she met. It says there on our verse, Anna spake of him to all. Whoever she bumped into, she said, do you know the Lord Jesus has come? Do you know the Bible said he was going to come? And now he's come. You see, I think maybe Anna thought about Genesis chapter 3, when God promised that he would send his son into the world. Maybe she thought about Isaiah chapter 6 or Isaiah chapter 9 that told us the Lord Jesus was going to come. Maybe she even thought about Isaiah chapter 53. Or maybe she thought about some of the wonderful Psalms. All these parts of the Bible told us that God was going to send his son. And so Anna told everyone, what God promised, he's done. He sent his son into the world. And boys and girls, so he has. And we're happy to speak to you about the Lord Jesus because there's nobody so important to get to know. Maybe some of you know some sports stars, footballers, golfers, cricketers, rugby players, uh, whatever sport you might be interested in. You know the names of some of those people. Uh, maybe some of you know some of the names of film stars or pop stars. Uh, but there's nobody as important as the Lord Jesus because all these people are only men and women. The Lord Jesus was the Son of God. He is God the Son. He is totally different. That's why we're happy to speak to you about him. Just as Anna was herself, that lovely old aged lady. But not only are we thinking about Anna, we want to think about a verse from the Bible. Here it is. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's found in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Now, do you remember that verse that we read right at the beginning with that great big word? All unrighteousness is sin. Everything that's not right is sin. When we tell a lie, when we don't do what we're asked to do first time every time, when we're cheeky, when we lose our temper, when we maybe steal something that's not ours, when we maybe want to have something that we can't afford to have. The Bible calls all those things sins. And this verse here tells us that all have sinned. Now that word all just means all. And all just means all. And all just means everybody. And everybody just means everybody. So we've all sinned. Every single person in this world has sinned. We have all done something that's not right. In fact, the Bible says there's not a just man, a good man, upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So we can't help it. And the Bible says we've all come short. Can you see how that word short is short? Well, there's a reason for that. You see, we've missed the mark. We've missed the target. I hope you can see that target in the background. It's an archer's target. He's got his bow and he's been firing the arrows. Well, when you can see where they landed, I'd have thought it was me that was firing the arrows. He's not done very well. I remember years ago being at a place called Hurst. Hurst is a little village just between Reading and Windsor, just outside London. And I was there for the Hearst Horse Show. No, no, I wasn't going to be riding the horses. I think I'm much too big and much too old for that. I was there to hand out gospel literature, to tell people about the Lord Jesus and the way to heaven. And we had a tent. And uh, during one of the breaks, I had a wander around this show. And there was a man there, an archer. And he had his target. And he had his bow. And he had his arrows. Now, actually, he had two targets. They were two politicians. One was a British prime minister. One of them was an American president. Now, I'm not going to tell you who they were, but they both had their mouths open. I think the photos that he was using had been taken when they were speaking and their mouths were open. And he told us, the crowd that was watching, he was going to fire an arrow 
right into the open mouth of one or the other. And he did it every time. Never missed. Well, then, you could pay a pound in those days and you had three shots. All the money went to charity. Well, I never did have three shots. I didn't pay the pound. Uh, not that I didn't want to. I just thought I'd embarrass myself. And so I just watched everybody else. And do you know what? Everyone apart from one missed the target. Never even hit. One person did hit the target, got one of them in the forehead. But everybody else missed. All the arrows missed the mark. They came short. That's what that verse is saying. We've missed the mark. We are not good enough to get to heaven. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the standard of God. God, God's standard is absolute perfection. And sadly, we all come so far short of it. So we're going to say this verse together. I'm going to count up to three and you can join me in saying it. Are you ready? One, two, three. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Now let's try it again. 1, 2, 3. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Now Romans is a book in the New Testament. I became a Christian age 16. When I did I knew nothing about the Bible at all. And so I just thought that the book of Romans and also the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, I just thought they must be in the old part of the Bible called the Old Testament, because they sounded kind of ancient and old, but they're not. They're in the New Testament, and both of them speak about the Lord Jesus. And so this is found in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. If you don't know this verse, I just advise you to find a Bible, look up the verse, and underline it, or write it out. And see if you can learn all the verses that we're going to learn. And you will have one verse for every letter of the alphabet. Are you ready? One more time. After three, we'll say it together. One, two, three. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter three, verse 23. Well done. Well, we have thought that the letter A, it's for that word all. And it's also for that lovely lady that we thought about, Anna, who saw the Lord Jesus just after he was born. But it's also for one of the disciples. He is called Andrew. Well, <clears throat> Andrew, he found the Lord Jesus, heard the Lord Jesus, realised who the Lord Jesus was, the Son of God, and he went running as fast as he could to his brother. He was called Simon. Although we know him more often as Peter. Peter seems to take up a lot of the New Testament. He was a very interesting person. But the first person to tell Peter about the Lord Jesus was his own brother, Andrew. And Andrew came to Peter and he said, we have found the Messiah. We found the Messiah, the promised Son of God. And Andrew came to tell his own brother. Now that's a great thing to do. When you've got some good news, you don't hold it to yourself. When you've got some good news, you like to tell other people. Well, I do anyway. And Andrew came and told Peter. Well, a little while later, only probably a few days later, the two of them were down on, um, on the seashore. Peter and Andrew, they were fishermen. And the Lord Jesus was walking by the seashore one day. And he saw them. He saw Simon and he saw Andrew and he saw them just doing what they always did. They were fishing. They were casting the nets. They were mending the nets. They were washing the nets. And the Lord Jesus just saw ordinary people, Simon, Peter and Andrew, just about their ordinary jobs. You see, boys and girls and other people listening, the Lord Jesus doesn't come and call rich people well he does but they don't usually listen he didn't come to the big hotel in jerusalem to see all the millionaires he didn't go to the palace to speak to all the politicians and the kings and the queens and all the important people like prime ministers and presidents oh no the lord jesus just came to the 
ordinary people. In fact, he said that he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. People like you and me. And so he saw Simon and Andrew. Do you know what he said to them? He said, follow me. And they left everything. They left the boat and the hired servants and their parents and the nets. And they followed the Lord Jesus. You see, boys and girls, the Lord Jesus more or less is the same to us slightly different he says if you want to be in heaven if you want to be right with god trust me realize that i died upon the cross that i took the penalty for your sin so that your sin could be forgiven so that you could be in heaven trust me well simon and andrew they did just that they obeyed the words of the lord jesus and they followed him it's always good to obey the words of the Lord Jesus. In fact, Mary, his earthly mother, one day said, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. So whatever the Lord Jesus says to us, we should do. So when he says, follow me, we should follow him. Well, Andrew and Peter followed. And Andrew and Peter had some wonderful times with the Lord Jesus. One of them there were ever so many people there. We call it the feeding of the 5,000. But there could have been more. The Bible just says there was 5,000 men, apart from the women and children. So if all those men were married, that would give you 10,000 people. And there could have been 12, 14, 15,000 people. We don't know. We just know those 5,000 men. And the Lord Jesus had spoken to them. And then at the end of the day, he turned to his disciples and he said, give them something to eat. Well, you can just imagine what the disciples would say. Now, boys and girls, just remember in the days when the Lord Jesus was here, there wasn't a McDonald's in every town. And there wasn't a, a, a Domino's or a Pizza Express or one of those Burglar Kings. I, I, I mean Burger Kings. There wasn't anything like that at all. And so the disciples couldn't understand what the Lord Jesus was saying. And they said, how can we feed so many people? Send them away. Well, Andrew was different. <clears throat> Andrew came to the Lord Jesus and he said, there's a lad here. He's got five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Do you know what, boys and girls? I just wish that Andrew had said, there's a lad here who's got five barley loaves and two small fish, and he hadn't said anything else. Well, the Lord Jesus, I'm sure that he thanked that little boy, and he certainly thanked his father in heaven. And then he started to break up that bread and those fish, and he started to give what he'd broken from those five loaves and those two fish to his disciples. And the disciples went round with baskets to all the people, all those 5,000 men and all the women and children, and everybody ate until they were all full. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me. I go to McDonald's sometimes. I don't tell my wife because she likes healthy eating. But sometimes when I'm traveling in the car, it's very useful. And I go in and I usually have a quarter pounder with cheese and chips and maybe a hot apple pie and a cup of coffee. And uh, I come away and I always think, oh, I could eat that again. I still feel hungry. But when all these people had eaten, they were filled. Absolutely full. No hunger pains at all. You see, when the Lord Jesus does something, he does it properly. And he does it well. And he satisfied them. And boys and girls, I tell you this, if you turn from your sin, and you believe on the Lord Jesus and you trust him, you will be satisfied. He'll never fail you and he'll never let you down. And so Andrew, he was a person who kept bringing people to the Lord Jesus. He brought his brother. He brought a little boy. He also brought some Greek gentlemen one day to see the Lord Jesus. And boys and girls, there's nothing greater than getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ yourself. For the Bible says he's the Son of God.
who loved you and gave himself for you.